Also, I was having a Skype lesson with a guy called Dan the other day. Nice to meet you, Dan. And we got talking about how to sort of make arpeggios sound less like maybe an exercise and more like a piece of music. So this is something that I'm also, you know, grappling with as a guitarist who tries to play jazz. So my background is something similar to what maybe a lot of you guys are as well. So maybe from something like blues, rock, this sort of stuff. I didn't grow up playing jazz. So for me, there's work to be done. Right, so if you look at a tune like Summertime, the kind of changes typically end up going something like this. If we're in D minor, you get like a D minor. So there we had a minus seven, flat five, to A7 to D minor. So that's like a two, five, one, minor two, five, one in D, right? Um, you could look into some of this stuff further if you need to, but the idea in jazz is I think we tend to think about progressions, um, sort of where is home, we kind of think about them in terms of two, five, one, we give them these kind of numbers so that I think in some ways it makes it easier to remember a progression if you kind of thought about it in terms of where the root movement is. And it also makes it easier to transpose it. Then from there we go to a, like a D7, to a G minor, then to like a B flat seven, to like an A seven, and then back to a D minor, same thing again. to a C, to an F, to B flat, A7, D minor. Now, here's the thing. What I want you to think about these progressions as, in a way, are opportunities, right? So each time you see an A7 to a D minor, that's an opportunity to play something that resolves from A7 to D minor. Equally, if you see a D7 to a G minor, that's a similar kind of opportunity, right? That's a, a D7 to G minor. So I think about this as a classic kind of minor 5-1, and also the D7 to G minor is us moving away from D minor to G minor with that same thing, you know, that minor 2-5-1. So that's kind of the theory side of this wrapped up, I think, anyway. Now, Keeping it simple is my kind of approach to a lot of this stuff. So I told you kind of the theory stuff which is going on in my head here. So a lot of us probably learn arpeggios something like this, right? So if I was thinking about um, some of the things that I learned as a kid, these big kind of arpeggio shapes from kind of sweet picking patterns, mostly. What I want you to do, and maybe think about doing, is instead think about smaller, kind of four note arpeggios. So if we're looking for an A7, something like this. We've got the A here, a C sharp, an E, a G, and an A. And what this, I think, encourage or can encourage is you to think about this in a slightly more musical way where you're actually able to keep track of the arpeggio a bit better in this kind of way so you could do inversions and that sort of stuff and because I've practiced some of this stuff quite a bit you start to see some of these I think that's step one, right? So you want to start being able to see A7 around the neck in different places. Of course, in jazz, as we improvise, we're gonna find ourselves in different places on the neck. And the goal might be to be able to see an A7 arpeggio in a few different places. The other step beyond that, what I think is, an A7 flat nine arpeggio really shows that you've kind of got 
the idea of this as being a minor 5-1 here, right? Now, I wouldn't necessarily be able to grab this all the time in a super easy way, but with these four uh, note arpeggios, it's much easier for me to see where that flat nine would be, right? So in this case, and if we tried that up here, I've not tried this before. Yeah. So practice being able to add that flat nine and maybe we'll try one more. You know, and you don't have to be doing this at any speed. You're just trying to be conscious as you're doing it about where that root might be. And you hear as you do that, that starts to sound a little bit more like a musical phrase, I think, and less like just an arpeggio. It's, to me, sounds like like it's got a bit more opportunity. So the thing that I came up with in the lesson, because I use this all the time in my own playing, was this little kind of technique. So we're starting on the third of an A7 at the sixth fret. We've got this C sharp, an E on the fifth fret, the G, the seven here on the eighth fret, a B flat up here on the sixth fret, down to the A, down to the E, then we're gonna land on the third of the D minor. We've resolved strongly from this dominant chord, right? So that to me is a very musical phrase. So if I heard that, to me it sounds like I understand what was happening behind the chord changes, right? And equally, if I did that, in those places where I can see that opportunity, as I was talking about earlier, from if I see the opportunity for a minor 5-1, then I can apply this little lick. And that's how I would practice a lick, but also practice this idea of making an arpeggio into something more musical. So what I thought about in real time when I was on that lesson was, what would I do? So I know that this works. Okay, what I could also do be to try and figure out where I could play that in other places on the neck. So like here. So taking the root note or the starting note of the, the phrase down onto the D string. Really good practice. Um, and then we could do it here. Uh, there's another. Uh, feels a bit weird playing it like that. bit trickier down there on the A string. Um, but worth practicing. So first of all, play it on with the starting note on some other strings so that you've got that lick kind of in a few different places. Then the other thing, like I said, we're starting on the third here. What if instead of starting on the third, we thought about starting on a different note, yeah? So we could start on the fifth. I'm still ending on the third there for that one. 
And the thing is, if you're trying to kind of just attempt this stuff, you can kind of find your way through like different, different kind of things. This is literally, I think, improvising just in a bit of a slower kind of frame of mind. There's a really nice one. So starting here, the E, the fifth note of the A, starting on the seventh fret, then playing our seven, then playing our A and C sharp on the seventh and eleventh fret, and then back up to our fifth here on the G string on the ninth fret, eight, nine, ten. Ah. And so then what I'd next be thinking about was, okay, well that's starting on the fifth degree of the scale, right? Or fifth degree of the arpeggio. So if I was to do that in D. Something like that, right? Uh, Yeah, that's right. And if you're anything like me, this might not be the super easiest thing to do in the world. But you'll find that that probably means that it is actually worth practicing, right? So what do we do? We're playing on the A7, we're starting on the 5th, 7th, root, 3rd, up to the 7 chromatic note up to the root and fall back down to the third of the D minor. Okay, so we're now starting from the seventh of the chord up here. And that one sounds pretty nice, I think. If we were going to start from the seventh degree, uh, the seventh of the D7, you get this. I think, anyway. So that's literally for me in real time, what you're seeing there is trying to turn these arpeggios actually into musical phrases that if I'd spend enough time practicing these, practicing these things like I have this, that's something I can use in real time. And it's a building block of kind of some of my jazz playing more than it is just like a lick or anything like that. But it, it's like this neat puzzle piece that fits in really well that I can sort of fall back on uh, in a useful way and then I can use that kind of approach to come up with and that kind of idea where you kind of and you can have the flat nine in there or you could just have a straightforward arpeggio think about maybe you can give yourself chromatic notes towards the end and you're looking for an eight note phrase really and ending on the ninth note and you want your ninth note to be like uh, a strong tone in D minor so an F a D or an A works really nicely as you've just seen F there, sounds really decent. So now, maybe go back to the intro and see if you can spot me trying some of these ideas in real time. I'll put together a PDF where I'm sort of showing how I'm seeing these bits and pieces and maybe I'll show you those in the two keys that I'm seeing opportunities for them in the tune summertime. But I think that's how you can practice taking arpeggios and turn them into real musical phrases I suggest start thinking of these four note things and then start thinking about okay I'm going to play these 
arpeggios and then join them into the next kind of chord and resolve them cleanly. Maybe you add in some flat nines, but once you start seeing these four note cells, instead it's a bit easier to see alterations because you don't have to think of this big shape. You know, like if I was looking for an A with a sharp five. I can see that the five is there. So that would be like a, if I wanted a sharp five sound. And yeah, like you've just seen there, that's literally the process in real time for me. I want a sharp five. I want a sharp five. So I'm gonna sharpen the fifth. I'm seeing that F up at the top as being that sharp five. And I can resolve it into the next chord. And if I wanted to do the same thing for the D, um, then maybe I'd figure out another place to play it for the D as well. starting on the third. Uh, so this would be the straightforward. So that was a really pretty. I'll see if I can get that into the improvisation. It's quite new to me. So maybe I won't, but that's the idea. Hopefully that's helpful and leave a comment if that helps you at all. It might be not as clear as mine, but I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.